Hello. This video is on a program on the system called KMPlot. KMPlot is a very powerful math graphing function program. It's similar to the Leibniz graph plotter in some of its basic capabilities, but it's much more powerful. However, like all powerful programs, it takes some practice. We're going to break the video in, on KMPlot into two pieces. The first will cover some of the basic ways that you can use it, and then there will be an advanced video for some more uh, advanced features of KMPlot. So let's start by opening up KMPlot. We're going to move our mouse down to the Start menu, click once with our left mouse button, then we'll move up to Education. After that, we'll move our mouse over and up to KM Plot, and we'll click it once with our left mouse button to open it. So we see here an area on the left where we can create functions, and on the right hand side, we'll see where they're graphed. So we're going to start with one of the most basic things. We're going to create a function. So we're going to come over here to where it says create, and this is always the first step to adding a function to the KMPlot graph window. We click create and we get five different choices. I'm going to start with the basic Cartesian plot, so I will select Cartesian plot, and it asks me now to enter my function. Now you can use the functional notation shown here, f of some variable x, and have a function in terms of x, or you could choose y equals some function of x. Now I'm going to use the functional notation, and later I'll show you why that's more helpful. So I'm going to type in a basic function. We're going to type in x squared, so I type my x, and then I use something called the caret symbol, which is pushing down and holding the shift button, and then the 6 key, and then the squared. And I hit enter, and the function shows up over here on the right hand side. And you'll see also that it shows up up here in my list of functions. I'm going to add another function now. Remember to do that, I'm going to click on the Create button. I'm going to choose Cartesian Plot, and it gives me a new function, g of x. I'm going to go ahead and type in a trigonometric function, cosine of x. And when I hit Enter, it shows up on my screen. Now I can continue to add as many different functions as I want so it does not have the limit, like Leibniz graph plotter, of only three functions. Now let me show you some of the capabilities that I have in KMPlot. I can move my mouse over here into the graphing window, and when I do that, you'll see something called a crosshair show up. And so as I move my mouse around, that crosshair moves around. Now what I like to do is move this crosshair over to my x squared function, the blue function, and I'll click once with my mouse button when I get there. So I move my mouse close to that, and I click once with my left mouse button. Now you'll see that the crosshair lines have turned blue now, and you'll also notice in the bottom left hand corner that I now have x and y values for exactly where that crosshair is. And as I move my mouse, I can see those values change. So if I can move my mouse here to where x equals 2, I can see the y value. And you'll also notice when you intersect the x-axis, a new value will show up, which is the root value. So it will show the roots of this equation as well as I move my mouse button. Now if I want to remove the information about that function 
and choose a different function I can just click again once with my left mouse button and when I do that I see the crosshairs turn black again and I can move them around so let's do the same thing now with our other cosine of x function I'm going to move the crosshair very close to that function click once with my left mouse button and I see it turn green and again I can move along here and get my different values and again whenever I cross x equals zero it will show me the different roots of this equation and since it's the cosine function it has many different roots so I'm going to click again and disengage get away from that function and go back so that's a nice way to get different values of the function and um, to see the roots of a function. Now I can also do some other things here um, in this window and I can for example change the color of the line or I can add a different name to the function. So let me go ahead and click my f of x function of x squared and I can change the name. So maybe I want to call it parabola. So now I have a function name of parabola of x and I can hit enter and it will show it up here in my function list. I can come down here and I can click on the color and change the color so let me make it red so now my function is red and if I click on the advanced button over here I can have it show the plot name and so it will add a label on here that shows the name of the function I can do the same thing with my other function but always remember if you want to make a change you need to click on the function first so I will click on the function and I will change the color uh, to uh, purple and I will also ask it to add the name of that function. So those are just some of the things that you can do um, to uh, make a nice graph to show to students. You can always edit the functions that you have entered to do that you simply come over here to the functions area click on the function that you want to edit and then you can come down here and make the change so for example let me change this to x squared plus one so I just add on my edits and I hit enter and it will update Also remember that anytime you want to add a new function, you must remember to click the Create button. Now if I type in an equation and make a mistake, when I hit Enter, it won't allow me to do that. So you can see here I've forgotten to put in the left, I'm sorry, the right bracket. But if I move my mouse up here, it will give me some information so you can see when I moved my mouse up there it said missing parenthesis or missing bracket so then I can go ahead and add it and when I correct the mistake and hit enter it will include my new function now I already had a cosine in there so let me change that to sine now if you want to delete a function you can come up here to select it so for example suppose I want to delete the g of x equals cosine x function I can click on that and then click the delete button and that will remove it from my list however I can also hide a function without having to delete it so let me go ahead and hide the sine function to do that I click once on that function to select it and I uncheck the box here so when I do that it disappears but I have not lost the information up here in my function window so I can go ahead and make other changes to my existing function and when I want to show the sine of x function again I can just click on it to select it 
click in that checkbox and it will show up again. So again, you can delete functions, you can hide functions, and of course you can create new functions by clicking the Create button here. Now remember I told you that it, sometimes it's good to go ahead and use the functional notation like f of x or parabola of x instead of using y equals. And the reason is because if I do express my equations in functional form, that means I can create new functions that combine existing functions that I've created. So let me show you an example here. Suppose I now want to add um, my sine of x function to my parabola function. I just want to see what happens when I add those together. So I could create a new function here by clicking the create function. And I can type in my different functions, f of x plus parabola of x. And when I hit enter, then it shows my new function here. And now that I've made that new function g of x, I can change f of x, for example. So suppose I change it to be minus 5. When I hit enter, it changes not just my f of x function, but also my g of x function, which depends upon f of x. So it allows me to make changes uh, to one function, and if I've included that in another uh, different function, then it will automatically update that. So I do recommend trying to use the functional notation um, if, if the students are comfortable with that. But of course you can always go ahead and create one in terms of y. So let me just do a simple linear function here. And it's no problem, you can have both functions that are expressed in terms of y or in terms of functional notation and they will all show up together. That's, that's no problem. I want to next show a few other features. Um, you can zoom in or out in this. So for example, suppose I want to zoom out to show more of my uh, graph here. I simply come over to, to where it says zoom out in my toolbar here. I click once on zoom out and then I move my crosshair again to the area where I want to have the center of where I zoom out. So I want it to zoom out around the middle and then I click once with my left mouse button and now it's zoomed out. So let me show that again. I click zoom out and I select the center where I want it to zoom and click once with my left mouse button. I can do the same thing with zooming in click on the zoom in button once and suppose I want to zoom in at a different spot maybe over here so I can click once there and it will center my zooming there where I put my crosshair and let me zoom in again but maybe over here now if I get really confused and I can't figure out how to get it zoomed the way I want I can always click reset view and it will go back to my original plot um, so I can start again from there. I want to show a couple of other features here under the tools option. To do that I just click on tools once with my left mouse button and it opens up some new options. I can click the find maximum button and I can select uh, the x values over which I want to look for a maximum. So right now it's looking for a maximum between minus 8 and plus 8. And now I can click each of my functions. So for uh, my parabola, the maximum is at x equals minus 8. If I check uh, my sign, it shows that the maximum is at x equals minus 4.7 and so on. And I can change the values of x between which I search for my maximum. There's also a handy calculator function here. So if I click on tools, 
I can select calculator and this allows me to uh, do calculations of different values so let me say I want to insert a function of cosine of x and then I can type in any value that I want for x and it will show that value so it's just like having uh, a trigonometric calculator now you can also select functions very easily when you're creating a new function so let me create a new function here and by selecting this button over to the right of where I'm defining my function it will open up the same window that I had with my calculator and I can choose my functions from this list and so this gives you a good idea of all the different functions that you have so let me choose square root here and I'm going to plot the square root of x and I'm going to multiply it by 2 and then I can hit enter and it will automatically put that in there and show my new function the last thing I want to show you in this video is how to save and export files if you want to save a file to use in a class later you can simply go up to file and save as and you'll want to choose my documents and I'm going to call this example file and save it so now when you close KMplot and you want to use that same file later you can simply go to your documents and double click on the file and it will open up KMplot again and you'll have that file that you were working on before you can also export files so this might be helpful if you're trying to create uh, a test and you want an image to include in the test to do an export you just go up to file and you come down to export and click once on your left mouse button and again it gives you the chance to enter a name so I'm going to call this example image and this will save the image for you um, that you can then copy and paste into another document so let's go ahead and open up the example image and so you can see now you have this entire plot that we just did and you can insert that into a test or use it in a worksheet so that's just a summary of some of the basic capabilities of KMplot it allows you to plot many different functions it allows you to save that as an image file um, you can change colors you can find maximum and minimum values uh, it's very powerful in the advanced video we're going to discuss some additional plotting types that you can use um, in KM plots such as polar plots and something called implicit functions and we'll also talk about uh, the possibility of using another independent parameter that you can change easily to show students the dependence on that parameter. So I hope you enjoy getting to know how to use KMplot and that you are able to use it in your math classes. Thank you for listening.